Welcome back to Dynamics Unplugged and another edition of Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management, Dynamics A to Z. Today we're back with the letter I, and I is for a very, very important setup and configuration if you are stocking inventory, and that's item model groups. So we're going to navigate to our inventory management module, another I, under the setup. Go to inventory as a submenu and item model groups. These are one of the fixed setups you have against an item or product and release product when it's first created. And it's really important. It dictates a lot of the processes that can occur with that item, with that product, and how it's reported against, and what some of your physical inventory process flows are going to look like in dynamics if you have different requirements and validations that need to happen. So let's go ahead and talk about some of those and figure out what is the best approach to using your item model groups. First off, the first selection or parameter is this one for stock product. So is the item held in inventory? Yes or no? Sounds pretty black and white. For the most part, it is stock product. If you hold it in inventory, select it. If this is used for things that are more like services that you would buy from uh, vendors or sell to customers, then it likely wouldn't be stocked. The one exception would be if you use subcontracting, where you need to generate a purchase order for a subcontracted manufacturing service, and, and that service item needs to be present in a bill of materials. In that case, you would want a item model group that has a stocked product flag selected. Uh, it would need to be of inventory model type FIFO. So something like this service stocked one. And when you set up that released product, the product type would be service. So there's two product types you can select when you set up a new release product or a new item, item or service. As long as the product type is service, it won't actually track the inventory of that subcontract service, but this stock product selection would allow that service item to be present in a bill of materials. If it's not selected, if stock product was not selected, you couldn't add that service charge inside the bill of materials to auto generate a purchase order. So uh, have it selected for items that truly are stocked for the subcontract services you need to be putting in bills of materials and don't have it selected for other items that might be used for various expenses or services that you want to maintain as products. Then you have your inventory model. This is really how you cost your inventory. What is your costing methodology? So we have FIFO, first in, first out, LIFO, last in, first out, LIFO date, weighted average, weighted average date, standard cost, and moving average. I'm not going to go into detail on all of those. There's some really great tech talks by Microsoft's Fast Track Architects and Krupke and Rachel Profit that go into detail on the different inventory models and uh, best recommendations for those as well as scenarios that you can encounter and what you can expect from a costing point of view. Uh, but know that that setup is is kind of fixed once you apply these item model groups to items. That is the item model group it will use. So you want to have that costing inventory model set from the beginning. There are some exceptions where you can update an items inventory model after you have inventory and transactions against it, for, but for the most part, consider that a, a fixed setting. Then do you want to include the physical value of a uh, of the product? So do you actually want to indicate in your transactions when they're physically updated? Do you want to include that in the calculation of an average cost? So at inventory uh, closing, this would occur. This is only used in certain types of inventory uh, costing methods, FIFO, LIFO, and LIFO date. If you're using weighted average, weighted average date, uh, you wouldn't have this updated. If you're using standard costs, you wouldn't necessarily need that selected to include the physical value. For fixed receipt price, there's a field actually on the release product where you could have a 
default receipt price set. So that would be used when updating uh, averages or standards across the item. So this would actually update your receipts and issues for the purchase receipts. As you can see, posting occurs at the actual cost for purchase invoice. The difference between the actual cost and the fixed receipt price would occur. So do you want to include those for the particular item that you're setting up? Then you get into ledger integration. So posting physical inventory and financial inventory, that's typically going to always be selected for the items that you are actually stocking. And you get two additional setups as far as recognizing costs. This is really important for financials and reporting. Are you posting to a deferred revenue account on sales delivery? So when you update a packing slip, are you accruing that estimated revenue to a, a specific account uh, and offsetting when the customer is invoiced later. So packing slip and invoice two steps there. Accrue liability on product receipt. This is a really important parameter for variance. If you want to capture PPV, purchase price variance, for example, and use different reports like the inventory value statement and your trial balance to analyze that PPV, you need to make sure your accrue liability on product receipt parameter is selected. After you've set up the costing method and recognition parameters, you get into your inventory policy. So the site model group does quite a bit. It controls a lot of setup and, and basis of how that item will be used. Negative inventory. Do we allow negative inventory? It's typically, I guess, not recommended to use physical negative inventory for the majority of your items. A lot of times it's a crutch when you can't accurately report inventory or you are inefficient in capturing reporting of inventory in the system. So you don't want to wait for somebody to receive in a purchase order of goods that you need to issue to production immediately. And you don't want to actually have to wait for those systematic transactions to occur. You want to pull the inventory into production and issue it as soon as possible. Uh, or if you have bad inventory control, companies will use that. It's more common to use, or I would recommend it in scenarios where the inventory is really fast turning and maybe low value consumables or floor stock. It's probably okay to allow it to go physical negative inventory. That won't have a, necessarily a huge impact on your finances and your inventory cost overall. Um, but in most cases, we would say we didn't want to allow physical negative inventory. Financial negative inventory is, is more common to allow that. So if this is uh, selected, uh, then it allows some more flexibility in when you're posting your physical and financial updates. So your packing slips and product receipts compared to your invoices and what shows as your cost balance, your inventory cost versus your physical. Then we get into warehouse management uh, and using quarantine management. This parameter is more relevant when I would say not using the warehouse management module. By that, I mean typically companies in the past used to set this for items that they wanted to go automatically into a quality hold upon receipt it would generate quarantine orders for the items that were part of these item model groups. We have better functionality for that now with quality associations and quality orders. So I see this parameter used less often, uh, but it does allow you to automatically create quality orders upon registration and registration could be product receipt or or registration of a PO line that could be um, registration or report as finished of a production order as well. The next set of parameters, physical update, is if you want to enforce a certain sequence to happen uh, and enforce certain transactions or make them mandatory. So registration requirements. Are you forced to do a registration prior to a product receipt? So in if I have a purchase order, am I allowed to go straight to a product receipt and post it to receive the item in or do I have to independently 
use the registration func uh, function, whether that's from the PO line manually or from the arrival overview where I might have to register the location and then uh, record a batch number or a serial number. And that was covered in the first set of this series in, in A in the arrival overview was the registration step. Similarly, do you want to mandate or enforce that receiving must occur prior to invoice? So must a product receipt be posted before somebody can invoice a quantity for a purchase order? Two similar parameters, but more on the outbound or issuing of inventory and now do we enforce that picking must occur before we can do a packing slip update. So on a sales order, must we use picking before we can do a, a packing step or for dispatching and picking routes? And then on inventory for something like transfer orders, would we need to do registration on those journals and orders before we can post the journal or post the transfer order shipment? And then similar to the receiving requirements on the inbound send, and do we have deduction requirements? Must we post a packing slip and have a physical update occur before we can do a financial update? Must we have that physical update before an invoice packing slip before an invoice? So very similar to the product receipt before the purchase invoice or physical update before financial update on the inbound end. So negative inventory, warehouse management, physical updates. Then we get into reservation parameters. Is there a FIFO day control on this item? Must we actually reserve in FIFO order? And this can change based on whether or not you're using warehouse management. Backward from ship date, do we actually want to calculate based on the ship date and move backwards to find the receipt that's nearest to it? So more pair like a just in time type scenario. We're not necessarily pulling from FIFO. We're not reserving what's the oldest one if we're placing a reservation right now. We're saying what's going to be the one that has uh, a date in closest relevance to when this will ship. Then in terms of the item itself, how are we reserving it? Are we using a default option uh, where there's no reservation necessarily applied? Uh, automatic would be automatically reserve the sales order line at order entry. Explosion, do we do an explosion on the bill of materials, uh, kind of like a cable with promise explosion? And try to reserve everything that's needed and manual. Do we always manually reserve that item sales line? So this is the default for that item and then individual sales orders that could be potentially overridden. Same batch selection is an important parameter. A lot of companies specifically when you get into process industries and food and chemicals, you might have a requirement to fulfill a sales order out of a single batch. So this parameter would actually help provide warnings and control around fulfillment of those sales order lines to enforce that the user is reserving from the same batch or show them the quantities that are available on batches to perform the correct reservation. We then have the consolidate requirement parameter. So this would be if we want to consolidate future inventory that is reserved for sales order lines. Uh, similar to how in master planning, we can consolidate demand into a single planned order with the period coverage group. This is really consolidating that into one single demand um, for, the, for those lines. Defo date controlled, so as opposed to first in, first out, this is first expired, first out. Do we want to reserve the inventory that will be expired first because FIFO might not represent the same thing. Just because something was received first doesn't mean it will expire first. If I'm receiving a lot of the same uh, purchased items from different vendors and then packaging and reselling those or maybe private labeling and reselling those, then I might have older product that has been received more recently and I want to move that product 
sooner and get rid of that first. So FIFO date controlled is a different approach to from FIFO date controlled. And then if that parameter is enabled, this pick criteria option becomes enabled. Do you want to base it off the expiration date or the best before date? Because you might actually have both and there might be a different calculation uh, for the best before than the expiration date. Last few parameters here are also very important. Batch disposition code. Is there a default batch disposition code for the items that are batch controlled and under this item model group? If we're using batch disposition code to drive availability of inventory and perhaps quality results and testing and blocking of certain transaction types, do we want to assign a default disposition? If it's a purchase item, does it come into an unavailable quality type disposition first or is it assumed that it's available and we're only moving to those unavailable statuses as needed next we have the vendor batch do we actually need to record a vendor batch number during purchase registration as opposed to a d365 specific batch number there might be a requirement to receive in the vendor batch and track for the purposes of consumption back to them uh, and report back to them as well as the d365 batch number that your company is using to track your inventory as it moves through your processes so do you require that that vendor batch is recognized or acknowledged or entered during the registration process And then as a default for any items in this item model group, this can be overridden on the release product as well, is the approved vendor check method. When we put this item on a purchase order line or a purchase transaction, is there a check that it, the vendor, the purchase order is for is on the approved vendor list? And if so, do we prevent that PO from being placed? Do we just provide a warning to the user and allow them to still place the PO if if for any reason it's a new vendor who's not on the AVL yet and just needs to be added, but we need to expedite the purchase order? Or is there no check at all? Do we not actually use approved vendor checks and just allow users to place POs for whatever vendor that item is needed from? And then finally, the last parameter here is override item production reservation. So this is a, a newer parameter where <clears throat> previously in, especially for warehouse management, this was important uh, as well as when is a reservation placed on a bomb line or formula line? And there's a parameter on the production order when it's created that says, is it at the, is it manually? Does it occur automatically when the production order hits the estimated stage or is it happening when it's operations or job scheduled? Is it happening at the start or the release of the production order? And there was no flexibility between any of the bomb lines. It was all or nothing for everything you were going to consume from that work order. So this gives us more flexibility to control specific items a, a certain way. So if there is a combination of consumption types like relieving lower side locations or bulk locations or service items or chemicals different from a, a fixed hard good, then you can override what that item production reservation setting is here at the item model group level. So a, a useful new parameter there as well. From here, I can go and see the related items. So what items actually have that item model group currently in case I'm adding new items and I wanted to do a comparison to figure out what makes the most sense. In my 10.0.32 environment, I no longer have the little top right X to return to the previous form. Now at the top left, I have a back button or a close and escape button that can be used. So that's a little insight into the latest and greatest in version 10.0.32. But that's really a wrap on the parameters for your item model groups. And that is the letter I in D365 Finance and Supply Chain Management, Dynamics A to Z. We will see you next time.